Hey YouTube, it's Malcolm's Reptiles, and today we're going to do another, not clutch update, kind of a future breeding plans update. So we're going to get to that third rack I promised we'd get to. We'll be able to show you most of them. A few of them are locked up, so it's going to be a little bit touch and go on them. But we got some guests here with us today. Uh, we've got Flat Mountain Pythons, which would include Kevin today. We got Anna here too, but she said Kevin gets to be the star of the show. And we've <laughs> also got Wolfgeist with us right here as well, who you all have seen and know. So... It was your choice. You said, hey, because I said we could film this, we could film that, we may film a few things. But you said, let's do another one of these, which tells me you're probably interested in what's going on over here. Yep. Let's see. Now, I'll tell you, Kevin is a little more talkative than Kurt. <laughs> a little. A little. But not a whole ton. So help me, help me get some words out of him, but we'll do pretty good today. So first of all, up here, what we got is this is one, unfortunately, I, I will not be able to pull out and show because they are locked up. I don't really want to disturb a locked pair this time of year. There's a lot of good work going on, so we need to leave them be. What is that, though? It's going to be a het clown, possibly at caramel bee, and bred to our inchy clown. So we're going to have inchy clowns, hopefully. That's the goal. Uh, inchy clowns, clowns, head inchy clowns. Or not head inchy, head clown inchies. I guess I should say it. That would be, yeah, catch me if I screw up any of these genetics. Uh, so that's what we're working on there. This next one, though, we will be able to show you this one. Now, come here, girly. I'm here. Oh, here, I'll hand her to you to show off. So what Kevin's got in his hand there is this isn't anything too crazy. This is a very simple single gene female. Looks like she got a little bit of litter. She got stuck in her mouth on feed day, but she'll get that out of her eye will. Uh, this is a straight calico female. So you're not gonna have a whole lot of high white in her, but she's got a lot of tail arboration in her, uh, in her like tail here, like in her pattern. Yeah, I gotta get that coconut out of there, I know. And what we're breeding her to is a Suma. So we're going to be looking for some mahogany calicos. That's what we're really trying to make. And then some straight mahoganies. We will not have any normals because using the Suma male, which I guess I could pull him out while we're at it. Actually, I can't. Sorry. All the males are, uh, that's where they're all at right now. So trust me, it's a Suma. So it'll be all dark snakes. We're going to get a darker version of the calico. See how the calico comes out with it and go from there. But no normals. No normals. We're going to put this one back and we'll throw out the next one. Boy, she wants to breed your hand. Yes, she does. She's like, hey, buddy, how you doing? Get in there, girl. Go on. We'll get your boy over to you in a little bit. Well, not this week. Ain't your week. You got to wait. Be patient. Now, this is definitely a Kurt project here. Let me hand this. I'm going to take a look at her. She is one that might be getting close to. Nope, not yet. Let's see if we'd see an ovulation we're at it. So what we've got here is a very simple single gene as well. This is an orange dream. So nothing too crazy going on here. And Kevin, feel free to interrupt anything you think about these pairings as we talk about them, these snakes, if you want to. Uh, but what we're putting to it is an inchy ivory that's actually been proven to be an inchy pastel ivory. So we are going to make, again... Oh, nice one. Yeah, no normals. Everything's going to be at least yellow belly. So we're working on some yellow belly inchies, some yellow belly orange dreams, some yellow belly orange dream inchies, some pastel flying around in there. <coughs> Excuse me as I cough. Yuck. Um, I'm getting over a little bit of a lung infection, y'all. Not COVID. I already had that. At least I think. So anyway, that's what we're working on here. Inchy ivory orange dream. Uh, and again, I kind of told you all throughout the years we've been doing this, you're going to see a lot of snakes where we are not going to make normals. Um, all three of these first clutches, the absolute worst thing we can make is a straight head clown, which technically isn't a normal. So you can see we're going to use recessives and supers a lot of the way to avoid doing that. That will not be every clutch, but it will be a lot of them. Let me go ahead and throw this one back. And that's not because normals are bad, but from a business standpoint and a sales standpoint, especially when you plan on being that boutique size breeder that we plan on being, you know, I don't ever want to be the guy running 10,000 snakes. I just don't care. I don't want to do that. Uh, but when you're going to be that size breeder, now this one can be a little, a little tedious sometimes. Uh, see how she's doing today. How you doing, girly? You know, then it's really important sometimes to try to control your production. That's exactly what we're doing. Now this one has smacked her face enough because she's angry. She does have a little bit of scarring there, but she's doing okay. So you can see a little jaw, got a little bad spot that will always be there. It's been treated. What are we looking at here? This is a champagne and this is a clutch where we can make a normal. So we're, we're running this clutch. This is a special clutch. This is a champagne to blitz pairing, which doesn't sound like, okay, champagne blitz. I get it. And I can tell you a champagne blitz combo. Uh, we were the first ones I, that I know of to produce that. We called it uh, champagne blitz. We call it the shits. Uh, you can find it on 
world and Paul Pythons if you want. We've done a lot of that kind of stuff. That's the only way we ever submitted because we just wanted to do it once. The thing with this is, though, in producing that is where we produced our very oddball pastel-like snakes. So this is a recreation of what produced those snakes in an effort to see if that same pairing will produce some more pastel-like. Now, I've had people who have told me, oh, your champagne has to have pastel in it. Uh, have you ever seen a champagne pastel? Doesn't look like this. This looks like a champagne, period. I've also bred her. <laughs> she said hi, didn't she? Mm -hmm. But she didn't laugh, did she? No, she, 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 she didn't touch even her. hit. Woo. She just, she flinched back and I flinched. <laughs> That's all it was. Yeah, she can be a little flinchy. Whoa, See, easy. she's got her moments. She has her days where she's that way. Yeah, hard. But with her, uh, she's been bred a lot of times to a lot of different males. I've had her for quite some time. Uh, this would probably be year five or so of breeding her, or four. And the only time she's produced anything with pastel in it is when we bred her to last year, which would be the Enchi Ivory that proved to be pastel on two clutches, not just her, and then also with the pastel-like. So it, it's she's never produced super pastel when she could have. She's never thrown pastel other than that one time. So, so as far as you know, she's just champagne. She's just champagne. I can show you champagne uh, pastels and what they look like. I'm intrigued by her pattern. So am I. She doesn't look. And champagnes will have a lot of variance in it. And yeah, our, it our champagne has a very low amount of pattern. Uh, she's just not a very, got a lot of pattern. To add a more pattern, we used Inchi. I can show you that too down the road. But next up will be our bumblebee. Was this one breeding? This one's not breeding. So this one we are breeding. I can show you the male since they're not locked up. I'll hand you the big old female. In-house produced proven female. So my favorite kind. It's just kind of a special thing. This is a, a nice big old, nice and bright for her age, bumblebee female, uh, being bred again, and this is a repeat pairing, to this lemon blast scaleless head right here. So what are we looking for? Obviously we're looking for scaleless head stuff. We're not doing a whole lot of scaleless head this year. I've kind of got what I wanted to further the scaleless project. So I'm really waiting for mine to get to, to be breed size to go for full scaleless, which we're going to do. But I didn't need to produce a lot this year. So I'm kind of giving him a little bit of a break. Giving him one girlfriend because I really didn't know. Get off there. A little fly. What else to do with her this year? So that's kind of the direction we went. Uh, anyway, I really like this pairing because we can get some spinner blast or some spinner killer blast. Because you got pastel spider, pastel pinstripe. So you can get super pastel spider pin, scaleless head, all in one snake. And those things look pretty awesome. So uh, we kept one back. I think last year, I'm really excited about. So just kind of a little, a fun little pairing, some old classic genes. And I, I think sometimes in the market, everybody doesn't work with the old classic stuff. They get so locked on to the latest, greatest, newest thing, let's all just do that, that then some of these really cool animals kind of get pushed away because everybody wants new, 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 you know. And I like cars. If you look at my car collection, it ain't full of a bunch of new stuff, right? So I've got uh, a little bit of a taste for classic things. Maybe because I'm over 40 now and getting to be classic myself. I can get antique tags here soon. So with that, I do enjoy having some of the older stuff in there and working that and keeping that alive in the market as opposed to just gone. Uh, next up, speaking of some older stuff, we're working with straight pin. It's being bred to an onyx. Again, onyx is going to be a het red exantic black pastel. It's an allelic combo, so there's no normals coming here. We'll have Head Red Exantic, Black Pastel, and all of that mixed with Pin. So we cannot hit a normal. We can hit single genes and two genes, and that is it. They are locked up currently, so I'm not going to pull them out. They're kind of, you know, doing the, uh, the tango there. Now, this girl here is already ovulated and literally just had her pre-lay shed. So I'll pull her out. Here you go, Kevin. I'll give you this big old girl here. Let me get the rest of her shed out. And this is a pairing I'm very excited about. And I'll be honest, a little bit of perseverance on my part. This is a straight up black pastel, also paired to our Suma male. So we're looking for some black pastel mahoganies. That's going to take us through our work as we look for some Suma bananas with a kicker of black pastel. I'd really like a Suma black pastel and a Suma black pastel banana down the road. Very key to that. Uh, the reason I say it's kind of a, I almost gave up on this. This is probably the third year I've paired them in a row. And she's gone for me. She's a proven female, but she didn't seem to be going with the Suma. And so this year I was going to be like, you know what? I keep banging my head on this wall that just ain't going to work. And then she ovulated. So I'm really excited about that. 
because uh, I'm looking forward to hopefully getting a nice, healthy set of eggs out of her. She typically in the past has laid good eggs in a, in a nice size set. So we'll see. And hopefully in about 30 days, like say she just, we just wrote her date on there today for her pre-lay shed. Uh, we're going to get eggs, which will be awesome. She should be our second clutch of the season. Let's see if we can't hang her. A little bit see if we can't see any swelling of her belly there you won't see much right now because the ovulation is done and gone down but you're going to see her sticking the warm and she'll start to build right through here as we go then i'll move down towards the tail so that's what we're expecting here you go in there come on girl there you go she can be cantankerous on her certain days too but today was not one uh next up Again, this is an in-house produced one, also still breeding. This is a, a clutch we've done a few times. I just really like it, so I'm doing it again. We are running a killer bee, so that is going to be a super pastel spider. That was one of the first babies I ever produced, 2015, my first year of production. Clutch number two, baby number one. So really like, you know, right in there in the very early stages. And so we've kept her, we've bred her multiple years. She's produced for me every time we've bred her. I don't think she's ever taken a year off if I don't. From memory uh, she's being paired to our calico male so we're literally looking for some pastel calicos some spider calicos actually we won't get any spider calicos will be pastel calicos and bumblebee calicos and then pastels and bumblebees because of the super pastel again we can't make a normal right so you're still seeing that theme next up well blood python we're not even going to talk about that set here in my new fancy chair and then down here we have a, uh, a lesser just easier to open the tub if I sit down on these low ones. Come here, girl. Oh, I know. You're tuned up. You're going to be fine when I get you out. So this is just a straight lesser. Here you go, Kevin. Um, and all we're pairing to her is going to be, make sure I get this right, yes, another pastel lesser. So this one does have the potential to make normals. What we're really shooting for here is bells. Let's be blunt. That's what we're hoping the outcome is, is some blue-eyed leucistics. Um... You know, and I'll explain why I'm trying to make more of those when we get over to Patreon. Because on Patreon, we'll talk about what we're doing with all these clutches and what the babies are for in depth a little bit. But that's what we're looking for there. So pastels, lessers, super lessers. And even though we wouldn't know it, a super lesser pastel is also possible. But you also have the possibility of normals, unfortunately. So, yeah. This is another gene, though, really quick while I got it, that I think is under underused. To me, and I tell people all the time when I get people who are looking for that pet snake, like, you know, you'll find them like, oh, I just want a pet for my kid or whatnot. They want something that looks neat. What's an inexpensive morph, you know, something that looks different. They don't want to pay an arm and a leg. And man, I push a lesser all the time. I'm like, because I think lesser, when it ages, looks great. This looks like a really cool snake. And here it is, a single gene. So they can get this for their kids, you know, in that $100 range most of the time. And have a really cool animal that looks way different than a normal without busting the bank. Um, and again, when you start pairing these with other animals, like I'll show you one here. Uh, I'm getting kind of off my rocker. But this is that same gene just paired, on no girly, with ghost. So you can do so much with lesser. This is such an overlooked genetic that I think that people kind of forget about these old classics and just kind of toss them to the wayside. You know, like they're just used up. Well, trust me, there's still more work to be done there. Uh, anything you want to add, Kevin? No, she's pretty. She is a beauty. Yeah, she's getting good size to her, too. I think she's going to do good for me this year, aren't you, girly? Kurt, anything you want to add? No. We got two others in here. Anna, Jojo? No, I'm good. Well, if that's it, then we're going to slide over to Patreon, tell you all what we're going to do with these, and we will see you next week.